Success is not achievable alone. We all have a story of a person who took a risk, someone who imagined a life greater than what we could, someone who stood in the gap. This show shares those someones, those unsung heroes who pushed us when we could have settled for what is. I'm Darren Slack, and this is Stood in the Gap, the show that focuses on the who, not the how, behind a leader's success. So I'm excited to really get to know you and for listeners to get to know you beyond yeah. true you, but we don't know the person yeah. of Miss Amber Fields. Yeah. Is that fair? That's fair. Let's but do it. But before we get into our conversation and the main focus of our time together, we always start off every conversation with an icebreaker called This or That. Mm-hmm. It's this rapid fire question game that we want you to answer as quickly as you can. Okay. So are you ready to play? Let's do it. This game? Yep. All right. Go. All right, Amber. Write a letter or send an email? Write a letter. Roller skating or ice skating? Ice skating. Fake or real Christmas tree? Re- oh, real. Real? Okay. Yeah. I want real. That doesn't mean I get real. <laughs> <laughs> I like the convenience of the fake Christmas trees. Me too. Trees. Yeah. Real or fake nails? <sighs> real. <laughs> Snowball fight or water balloon fight? Totally water balloon. Yes. We're, yeah, we're going to be good friends. Yes. Roses or tulips? Tulips. All right. Necklace or bracelets? Necklace. And chicken nuggets or hot dogs? Ugh. Chicken nuggets. <laughs> <laughs> if only neither was an option. <laughs> right. Yeah. Both pretty nasty foods. Yeah, gross. <laughs> My kids would, would say otherwise, but. <laughs> Carpet or hardwood floors? Carpet. Superheroes or supervillains? Superheroes. Superheroes. Yes. Who's your favorite superhero? Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman? Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So do you like the new Wonder Woman with Gal Gadot? Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, she's all right. Yeah. I'm a, I, I'm an old school fan, too, though. I grew up on Wonder sure. Woman and all of the superheroes. So So are you a Marvel or DC fan? Marvel. Marvel? Mm-hmm. But you like Wonder Woman? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, more Marvel I'll watch anything Marvel if you ever listen to the show. Mm-hmm. Talked about that a few times. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm really all of it. I love DC too. Batman, he's he's stole my heart a few times too. Yeah, so. Batman's my favorite character. I just saw the new Batman. And With Rob like, Pattinson. It is awesome. I was pretty <gasps> I mad that Rob Pattinson was announced the new Batman. Because mm-hmm. I was like, Twilight guy, for real? Oh, but no. It's like my favorite movies. No. <laughs> I've not seen one of those. I've seen clips, and it's so cringy that I was just like, I'm not going to even spend my time. <laughs> oh my okay, watch the last one. The last one's uh, good. <laughs> uh, man, but have I have the me. same sentiment. <laughs> Rob Pattinson in a, in, as Batman? What? Uh, but yeah, I haven't he seen did it yet. Yeah, he, well, he did Don't a great ruin it job. for me. Good. Did a great job. So it was worth your while. Okay, good. I'm going to so, do it. <laughs> so let's switch gears then, Amber. And so thank you for playing with me. Yeah. Let's switch gears a little bit and talk about you okay. and the words and the moment that changed your life. Because this word, the show is all about the words that were a turning point for us. And my words were from Jet Banner mm-hmm. saying, I'm not giving up on you. And so mm-hmm. I'm interested in learning what those words were for you and then who said those words to you. Yeah. So I'll ask you. What six to 10 words changed your life? Yeah, oh, this is so good. So the words were, when are you going to realize you have everything you need within? When are you going to realize that you have everything you need within? Mm-hmm. What was happening around that time that led up to someone saying those words to you? Yeah, I was in a career crisis. Okay. And I was going through outwardly searching, right? I had had... Uh, I went to college, picked a career that picked what I thought I wanted to be when I grew up. And when I actually had the opportunity to do it, it did not fulfill my spirit. It did not do anything for my soul. As a matter of fact, it felt like I was the bearer of bad news. So I was like, nope, I'm not doing that. But then it sent me fast forward 20 years on a trajectory. I I have zero regrets. It was an amazing journey. However, I kept looking externally for the answer. I kept taking leadership course after leadership course. I joke, and I said this, I told this story at a True U event a couple weeks ago where I took the seven habits of highly effective people, Mm -hmm. not once, but twice. (laughs) (laughs) So it was like I was hungry and searching and I couldn't get it in my faith. I couldn't get it anywhere. It was like insatiable. So 
so let's pause then. So how did you grow up? Like, where did you go to school? Yeah. And then what was your job that you didn't feel fulfilled in? So uh, I grew up on the Near East Side here in Indianapolis. I went to John Marshall Middle School. Very cultured. I was a um, little brown girl, you know, and I kind of sat in the middle, right? I didn't fit in with my black friends. I didn't really fit in with the white friends. I just kind of sat in the middle. So it was a little bit weird, you know, to have yeah. this middle seat. And I was always the girl that was like, I want everybody to be friends and, you know, trying to be the peacemaker for everyone. Can't we just all get along? You know, that old statement, that was yeah. me. Well, my parents moved me to the Southwest side of Indy. So I grew up and graduated from Decatur Central High School, which was a completely other realm. You know, we're kind of a little bit hick country, sure. and, but a little bit of city life. And so I, it flipped, but still, the middle seat. I still sat in the middle of the seat between my white friends, my black friends, and a few more brown friends there. And so what's your ethnic background then? Yeah. So if you didn't feel like you could fit in mm -hmm. in yeah. a certain group. Yeah. Right? My dad is from the Philippines. Okay. Gotcha. So yeah, and I didn't get to meet him till I was twelve. So if okay. that gives you any idea, I grew up in a predominantly white family. So you uh, adopted? Um, by my dad. My mom is white. My stepdad adopted me, met my real dad when I was 12. But I, I always had that feeling of like never really being mis like really understood. Mm -hmm. And whenever somebody looked at me in the family picture, I was the one that looked oddly different than everybody else. So it was just an interesting feeling. And I didn't even realize that I was different from everybody else until I met my real dad. He lives in California. I went out there to visit my Filipino family. And Darren, in that moment, it was like, oh, I 100% make sense. Like now I get it, right? I go back to my family as, as a whole human again. I'm like, okay. So I get the benefits of being part white and part Filipino. And I started to form this responsibility around bridging the gap for people, even at a young age. Wow. Right. That's yeah, powerful. So you're on the south side of Indy growing up yeah. and you go to school where you graduate from high school. Mm -hmm. And then where did you go to college? University of Indianapolis. OK, so you Indy. Yeah. So I studied broadcasting. OK. Journalism. And then after graduation, you get this certificate. You, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you get this. Congratulations. You now have an eighty thousand dollar degree. What are you going to do with it? <laughs> and it was a tough journey. You know, I was um, the news director for 88.7 WICR. So it's a jazz station here in town. Mm -hmm. I was on the air the day of 9-11. Wow. And it really impacted me. It really was like, if this is what you're going to do for the rest of your life, you better be ready for battle because this is hard work. It's really dark sometimes. It's really tough. Sure. And, and we didn't know back then that news was going to take the turn that it took today. Sure. So yeah, what was that turn to be more? Well, it's just not, it's. To clarify, because I can say so many things. No, about I know. The news. I'm like, uh, I have some newscasting <laughs> friends out there, but they get it. You know, it's just, it's a lot darker than it was. Um, there's a lot of sensationalism. It's very political, oftentimes. Sure. And that's not who I am. You know? Sure. And so, and Indianapolis, not to mention, is the top 25 market, and you don't get to start here. Oh, I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. So, Indy is a top 25 market for, for broadcasting news. and mm -hmm. news? It is. I did not know that. That's interesting. Yeah, 20 years ago it was. Maybe it's a different number today, but 20 years sure. ago it was. And I had just met my future husband, and he had two little kids that were one and two. And for us, for me to chase this career path, I was going to have to move him away from those two little kids, and I just wasn't willing to do it. So wow. I put my career on the back seat so I could help raise my family, be there for my husband. And I figured, you know, I'll find another path along the way. So how'd you meet your husband then? Oh, gosh. It's <laughs> <laughs> a funny story. So uh, he and I met at CT Peppers here in Broad Ripple. We were both working. Cool place. Yeah, it was a cool place <laughs> back in the day. Uh, and what was really funny about it is I almost didn't go to work that day. There were a lot of things that could have played against us being together today. And somehow, I think by the grace of God, he divinely initiated this connection between two people. And the minute I met him, you ever had those weird things happen to you where, you're go where you hear things and you're like, that's not my voice. I didn't mm -hmm. say that. Oh, yes. I saw him from across the room moments. and I said, I'm going to marry him. 
And I and I was like, shut up. Why are you even saying that? Like, you you don't even know this guy. And you hadn't talked to him. Not one, no. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> and so then you go, okay, that's weird. Move on. Well, he meets me around the bar. I was the Jack Daniels promotions girl. He was a bouncer there. So mm-hmm. we were working. Sure. And he he was like on it. Like yellow on mustard. He was like, how can I help you? I'm carrying this big table, this big blackjack table. And all night long, he's like, do you need a drink? How can I help you? Like right there. So he's a gentleman. He was very much a gentleman in his actions. His words were a little, (laughs) and we'll get into that. So he says to me, so when are you gonna ask me out? That's bold. What? Shooting a shot. Yeah, I was like, what? I'm not, try again, sir. He goes, well, you know, I have two kids, so you probably won't. And I was like, what? How old are you to even have two little kids right now? You're like 21 years old. And, um, but he was wanting to be very transparent. He's like, clearly I like you and I hope you like me too. And so at the end of the night, he wrote his phone number down on a napkin, which I still have, that says to a very pretty girl. Amazing, Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, it's a little heartfelt. I'm holding my heart here for the audio listeners. Yes, it was (laughs) cute. Um, What happened afterwards, it's a funny story. I'll share it with you. Um, we'll, we'll, you guys are all our family now. Um, <laughs> so he, I call him because he's like, if you call me, then we'll figure out a time to get together. So I call him and I was like, what even made you come talk to me in the first place? And it's like four in the morning. Like he's just now getting off work. I just get home. And he goes, well, because I really liked your boots. And I wow. go, I'm sorry, my what? I thought he said something else. Sure, yep. <laughs> so yeah. I hung up Which on him. Which I thought you said now, but then I was like, oh no, okay, got it. <laughs> B-O-O-T-S, <laughs> he says. So I hung up on him. He called back and goes, why'd you hang up? And I was like, really? That's sure. inappropriate. He goes, I didn't say that. <laughs> and that is the start of our story is like. That's amazing. He's very humorous. He's very funny. Uh, I love so it. yeah, yeah, he's a good one. And so you're on this journey then. And so I'm trying to. Weave it back in. Yeah, so you're. Because I know who said those words to you, mm-hmm. right? And so you're on this journey of self-discovery yeah. after college, and mm-hmm. you're at this place in in work, right? You're yeah. in broadcasting, which, which is what you went to school for, mm-hmm. right? But you didn't feel fulfilled. Yeah. So where did that come from? Like, what wasn't the fulfilling part? Just that when you had to show up and talk about hard stuff because yeah. of 9-11? Like, talk to us about that. Well, after that happened, so I just, there was something that clicked in me. I was like, well, I don't really like this anymore. I don't like how this feels. Uh, but you have an $80,000 degree, so you better go f- at least try. You better go figure it out. So I worked for Wish TV, I uh, interned there, WLFI in Lafayette. I worked for Fox 59 as a writer. It never felt aligned. I never could get on board with the things that we were saying and the work, the hours were crazy. I had a small baby at this point. You know, she was only a few months old. She's now 17, about to be 18. <laughs> so I just took a turn and got out of it altogether. I uh, I worked in the radio station and at the radio station, I was like, this ain't it. This cannot be it is actually what I said. And so I had a couple friends that worked in logistics. I went in customer service and I learned to lead teams and I did a lot in freight forwarding, which was a good job. It took care, it gave me money to pay these expensive bills, you know, expensive school loans and to take care of my family. I did it for probably six or eight years. And there again, I was like, I felt like a caged bird stuck inside of these four walls where my personality is totally outward. I wanna be with the people. And I didn't wanna be in sales. Oh, wow. Which is funny story, because I ended up with a career in sales, right? Yes. But someone once told me, you'd be really good at it. And I said, you're crazy. And he said, (laughs) let's try it out. And it took him three times to convince me to even try it out. And you're pretty good at it. I mean, you know. Yeah, Yeah, you're good. (laughs) I'll let y'all toot your horn. Okay. You're good. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Yeah. And so so you didn't feel fulfilled because you didn't have that human aspect That's it sounds right. like right yeah you wanted, th- you wanted something that had you connect with people that yeah. valued the relationships which, yeah. which is a common theme on the show it sounds like mm-hmm. and so what so what was happening to for someone to say those words to you um that mm-hmm. really m- made it a point a, a turning point for you yeah so i was having an identity crisis okay i was a mom i was a wife and I couldn't identify with anything else. Wow, okay. And I'm college educated. I have, 
I literally lost myself inside of myself. Mm -hmm. And I was shaping and searching and looking and asking all the questions from an outward perspective, trying to get someone to tell me my gifts and talents, trying to get someone to tell me who I was so that I could find her again and then move in alignment with this person. Sure. So, so I was, wanted some validation. Yeah, yeah, and and looking for it in all the wrong like wrong places. Sure, right. Asking my friends, asking my family, and it and they're telling you all the things that they think you should be and all the things that they see you as. Mm -hmm. So then you morph and you wear masks. You morph into what you think that they want you to be. Then you mask up because that didn't work and that hurt somebody else, so that didn't work out. So then you mask up and you put your armor on and you you just become this inauthentic version of yourself sure. where you're in there, but it's not, it's almost like you're acting. Right, yeah, you're and a poser. You're a poser. Yeah. And someone said to me that like clicked after, and not, not the thing that we're talking about, but she said, I'm just always curious which Amber I'm going to get. Oh, wow. What? <laughs> yeah, how'd that make you feel? Do you feel like, like you had imposter syndrome? Yes, or? I felt like a fraud. Wow, yeah. And she's I've a really close friend of mine. And it was like, oh crap, I've I've been seen. Sure. And now she knows all of my insecurities and now she knows that I'm not a good person or whatever was going you know, on in my head at the time. And I just I had to I had to get on a trajectory to fix that. So let's double click on that then. So yeah. how did it feel to be seen? And are you still friends with this individual? I am still friends with that's, her. That's incredibly good. Mm -hmm. Some people would shy away from that and yeah. like go into their box and go, oh, well, I'm not gonna associate myself with that person anymore because right. they'll call me out. Mm -hmm. And we're talking about calling in now. It sounds like that's-, that's Oh, she did that. Yes, oh yeah. So mm -hmm. so how did that make you feel though at the time? I mean, it felt awful. Sure. Because somebody had called out my, uh, my inauthenticity. And at the time I didn't even know what that was. I sure. didn't know that that's what it was, but it hurt and, it, and I thought, here I am trying to give and do all the things. At this point, I have five kids. So when this happens, we have, well, we had three. We ended up having a set of twins shortly thereafter this happening. And um, I feel like that was just God's gift to me for sure. stepping into my marriage, for stepping into who I am and stepping into who he created me to be. So then what that process looked like mm -hmm. when you started to um, see you Mm -hmm. Right. And figure out like which Amber is the Amber that needs to show up yeah. all the time. Yeah. So the same guy who introduced me to technology and invited me into sales is also the same guy who saw an opportunity for me to take a leadership course called Zarvos Leadership and Coaching. Mm -hmm. And boy, did it rock my world. What the hell is Zarvos? <laughs> <laughs> Everyone says that. <laughs> it's an opportunity for you to peel back the onion layers and get some real work done. Okay. Wow. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Like, what do you do? Like, is it yeah, like a you, course online? No, like, it's a course. It's a 10 day course. It, it's, it's crazy to me. He teaches this course all over the world. So in Spain, Russia, Europe, it's been going for 30 years. Wow. But he only teaches it here because he lives here and his family is from here. So this is a guy. Yeah, his name is Jim Zarvis. Okay, yep. yeah. Yep, Zarvis Leadership and Coaching. He's a thought leader with True You. He's a great friend of mine now, you know, because I took the class about seven years ago. And in, in it, it just allowed for me to be able to see myself again for the authentic, authentic person that I am. Wow. He, uh, he helps to uncover your gifts and talents. Like what are, what is innately your gift? Because whatever your gift is unique to you and nobody else. Wow, that's deep stuff. It is really deep, Darren. And I'm curious as to like how that happens. Mm -hmm. like, I'm, like How it happened was my husband and I are in a fight. Our marriage is on the rocks. We've got these three kids. I'm trying on multi-level marketing. I'm trying, and I was very successful at that. I was a hustler and I love to promote product and help people feel better. So I did that. Then I uh, went into sales and was hustling sales and doing all that. And my husband just looked at me and he said, when are you going to realize that you have everything that you need already within you? Wow. Wow. And I looked at him like, are you nuts? <laughs> what are you even saying to me? And what's your husband's name? His name is Daniel. Daniel. Mm -hmm. Okay. So 
he looked at you because I'm sure he's stressed out because mm-hmm. we because I'm divorced and so I get it. Yeah. All right. And so I just got divorced last year and I get it. So you're going through this this tense moment. Mm-hmm. You're fighting and yeah. And it sounds like there's some self doubt on your part for sure for him to step up to say, when are you going to realize? Because you're stressing him out yes. with your indecisiveness yes. and. I'm just speaking from experience. I'm just, I'm not trying to label something. I'm just, I'm just asking. Yeah, that's a hundred percent where he was. Right. He's like, I've been, I've been chasing you around for 10 years. You trying to figure out you, you trying to find your identity. You're going to all these classes. You're reading all the books. And I'm in love with the woman who, who is already there. He could see me. Mm, It's beautiful. Where I couldn't see me. And oftentimes you have you your friends do this for you. I could list off a million people that have stood in the gap for me uh, in my career, in my friendships, in my motherhood, in mm. all of that. But the one when I thought about doing this podcast, the one that kept standing out to me was this class because he said that. It it prompted me to go and get intentional. And I didn't know that that's what I was doing, but getting intentional about getting back to myself so that I could live the most authentic life that I wanted to live and create this culture inside of my home and inside of my workplace where we could do good work together. Sure. And and so your husband, so Daniel looks at you in this crisis, this identity Mm -hmm. crisis and is he a pretty self-assured person? Oh yeah, himself? for sure okay. he is. Yeah, now like there it. are some other things that we were, we're, our marriage was on the rocks. We have we had a lot going. His mother had just passed away. Hmm. Our yeah. kids were young, and I had to get really serious about figuring this out, or my marriage was going to fall apart. Sure. So I take this class. I come out of it like a new person. Now you wouldn't necessarily be able to tell that I was a new person mm-hmm. because I can still operate from a place of like, when it's about you, yeah. well, I make all things like it's all good. Sure. Yep. So my transformation happened inwardly. We oftentimes don't tell those stories because mm-hmm. enemies or the antagonists aren't always external. That's right. And that's my story too. It's like the enemy and the antagonist was always me. Me. All right. It was yeah. always my journey, my story, my inner my alter demons. ego right yeah mm-hmm. exactly yeah and i don't know if you ever done the enneagram have you done the enneagram oh before? yeah and are you uh are you a three close oh two yes okay two yeah. three wing yeah okay yeah so i'm a three two wing and in threes we we primarily operate from the sense of of acting or being um the performer uh-huh. right and so yeah. identity is very and our reputation is very important to us, mm-hmm. right? And so we'll do anything to protect it. That's right. And that can be healthy or unhealthy mm-hmm. or, or unhealthy, right? Yeah. And so your husband says this to you. You get into this class mm-hmm. with Zarvos. Yeah. What did you discover about yourself? I discovered that I – so growing up, I was a very emotional person. Like I'm a feeler. So I'm a two, so I'm a helper, but I'm also a feeler empath, right? If you're feeling sadness, I'm feeling sadness on your behalf, which I think that most humans are if you're not too far armored up. Right. Right. Exactly. And, but I am uh, quick for, to forgive. I'm, I feel a lot of things. Well, I was growing up, I was told that was bad and wrong. Wow. And I was told that my vulnerability was my weakness. Hmm. And what I learned in this class is actually that my vulnerability is my superpower. Wow. And that that my passion and my power is what allows for me to be different than other people. That's right. That's mm-hmm. amazing. Yeah. And so after that, like, what did you embark on to really help transform you, you, your relationships and mm. your life after that? It was like I started this trend. So once I went through the class, my husband went through the class, and and his transformation was very external. So you could physically see the transformation for him, it saved our marriage 100% to the point where we did a vow renewal at 15 years. We've now been married almost 19. Wow. And Congrats. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> but we wouldn't, we couldn't find the place, the commonality or the, the common ground to move forward together. But we both wanted it to be together. But we had too many old maps and too much old baggage that we were carrying forward. So I wanted a reset. Mm-hmm. So I asked him to remarry me. Oh, that's beautiful. Mm-hmm. That's beautiful. And we did to our a hundred of our closest friends. Our kids stood up for us. It was, 
people who went were like, that was the most feeling thing I've ever experienced. And it was so beautiful. And who we are today is 100% representative of our authentic selves. The We don't fight. We have disagreements and we have conversations. We talked about hard conversations today at True You and I... I own that. We talk about intentionality. We talk about commitment. We've just leveled up in all of those places. Our contribution to one another, our contribution to our family. Wow. Our kids are like, oh, this kind of sucks for us because now we can't play mom and dad because they always on the same page. (laughs) I love it. But more importantly, what this work did for us is it brought us back to being best friends. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. He's everything. He is my cheerleader. He is the one that will stand in the gap for me when I am remiss. Like when I can't find myself, he's like, remember, you're right there. Mm -hmm. It's okay. He's always, he's the encourager. And so when, turn it around. So so we save our marriage. Then it's like, okay, now I've got to go back, get back on the pathway to career. Mm -hmm. Because I told him I'm still not there. Sure. While I have authentically found my voice. I know that I am heard. Yeah. What do I do now? Because I'm not doing the work I'm supposed to be doing. I'm having a great time in IT. I'm having fun with great relationships and building great mm-hmm. contacts and helping people from a technology perspective, which I loved. But I never felt like I belonged fully. Sure. So you had to find that mm-hmm. career journey that yep. aligned with your personal journey. Yep. And so where did you find that? Or have you found it? I did find it. Oh, so tell us. <laughs> I went through this other program <laughs> called Rise and Thrive mm-hmm. with Rebecca Fleetwood Hessian. Met some of my best friends, uh, Courtney Simkas, Lindsay Chekma, and Denisa, and Wendy. And, and in that, I was with other professional women that were dealing with imposter syndrome, mm-hmm. that were still trying to find clarity in their own careers. It, for the first time, I just didn't feel alone in this sure. and they helped me gain the clarity I needed to make the moves and meet the people that for the divine, for the divinity, right? Sure. For the thing that was supposed to happen for me where I belonged. And Chris Mills is that person. She is the CEO of ML Talent Strategies. Yeah. You know, when you get those God nudges. Yeah, yeah Chris has a very powerful story herself. She does, yeah. she has an incredible story and God kept nudging me to reach out to her and I kept putting it off. Mm-hmm. It's like misery loves company. <laughs> <laughs> like, just sit in it some more. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it works. I know. So I finally get the courage to reach out. And I just told her, look, I I want to be in operations. I want to lead a team. I want to be the face of something. I want, And I want to come to work every day. I don't want to come to work. I want to run to work every day. Sure. I want to feel like there are flames under my feet and I just can't stop doing the work because I love it so much. And she was like, well, um, she's like, interestingly enough, we have an opportunity that Mike Lance, um, who is the owner of True Mm -hmm. You, they were in a a position where they were going to buy True You and they were looking for somebody to run it. Wow. And here you go. And here I am. Yes. And as a chief culture officer, like what's exciting you right now? Because you've, you've came on what, September last year yeah. of we're sitting here in March of 2022. Mm-hmm. You came on September of 2021 mm-hmm. and you came in and just just hit the ground running and just turned that organization around like no one's business. Yeah. And so what's that been like for you? Mike has really big dreams and he has really <laughs> big goals. And so do I. Right. When he was sharing his vision with me, it was almost as if God had been preparing me for this job my entire career wow for 20 years he was like you're going to need to know this person not right now but then you're going to need to know how to do this you're going to need to know how to put events together you're going to need to know how to put programming together like it was just all the pieces fell one of my uh team members marissa says you came in without any ramp time no training no nothing you just (laughs) got to work and it was like yeah god had been preparing me all this time that's amazing But, but more than that I had a team that that has these amazing gifts and talents and all they needed is for somebody to see them. Right. I see. And ignite them. And you're the person for that. I think that it's, I was born to be, you know, to ignite that that's fire. Amazing. Yeah. That is beautiful. And just hearing and knowing you and seeing how the team lights up with true you is mm-hmm. just it's it's amazing. And yeah. And I'm going to go through Zarvos too, Yay. my friends, and uh, and I can't wait because um, 
what got me, and I'll share this story with you, Aaron, because I haven't yet, right? Because I was very skeptical at first because mm-hmm. I've been through like the Indianapolis Great Banquet and yeah. things like that, which which is really transformative for me. But still, like I'm like right now, as I sit here, I feel like I'm miss. There's something missing. I just mm-hmm. can't put my finger on it. I know I'm living in my purpose and doing what I'm doing. I'm like, what is missing? What am I not seeing about myself that 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 I need to change? I don't. I I just don't know. It's mm-hmm. a blind spot for me. And and Marissa went through recently mm-hmm. went through Zarvos and she grabs me by the shoulders and. Just the look on her eyes, it was like this instant connection. It brought tears in my eyes. And Aww. she said, Darren, you it's life changing. You have to go through this. And that like ten minutes later I signed up. Like <laughs> it was at a true you event. <laughs> and I told her, I was like, Hey, I'm signing up today. I think, I think Jim, Jim was there. Jim was yeah. He was the yeah, speaker was that there. day. Yeah. And it was just something about the way she said it that I know that that, that I'm I'm looking forward to what is going to be discovered. You're going to love it. And so I love things like that because I'm always about getting to the inner depths of Mm -hmm. our souls and our hearts. Mm -hmm. And I think all of us should take that journey. Yeah. Um, Because we're living in a world right now where that's not, that, that, that's not welcome often in a Mm -hmm. lot of circles, that vulnerability, that transparency. Yeah. And, and that authenticity. Yeah. It's the thing that you asked me what I'm most excited about with true you it's that piece of it right there. So I've watched. So I believe that we're the source and we're the creator of our of all the things in our life. That's right. Good and bad. Mm-hmm. And when I step into the True You community, my team is the creator, and they set the stage with their authenticity, with their vulnerability, with their openness, right. with their hard work. They literally pour their hearts and souls into everything, from the decorations on the table to the speakers that come mm-hmm. up to the greeting you at the door. Like I watch them come alive. Right. Which then causes all of our businesses and all of our members to come alive, Mm -hmm. too. And we've had some hard conversations in that room. Sure. We're coming off of our DE&I month, and that was just by the grace of God. Like, I prayed over the room. I prayed over the speakers. I prayed over the community. Bring the people in the room who want to have the conversation to create change. Right. Because we will be the catalyst to change. Look, I will meet you 100% where you are. Right. And when you're ready to run... I'm ready to go. Wow. I love it. I love mm-hmm. it. Yeah, it's funny. When we start to see people as humans, mm-hmm. they come alive. And mm-hmm. we can only see people as humans if we – we can only stand the gap for people truly if we see them as humans. That's right. In that moment of your crisis, your husband yeah. saw you as a human. Mm-hmm. He saw you as himself. And that's embarked you on this mission mm-hmm. to live out your purpose, to – not yeah. only see yourself, but to see others as yourself. And look at what you're doing, mm-hmm. Amber. I mean, it's amazing. Thank you. And, um, and part of that, too, for us, I want you to um, see one of our kids right now, too. So yeah. PROACT is an organization that primarily serves youth, and our mission is to stand in the gap for vulnerable populations while empowering youth to actively transform their communities. And we're starting t- to incorporate youth voice into our podcast. Mm-hmm. And so our youth have prepared questions that they want to ask our guests on their, our show f- from now on. Mm-hmm. And one of the questions that was asked recently was, what did you want to be when you grew up? So, Amber, I'll ask you that question. What did you want to be when you grew up? If you were speaking to a child right now in this seat, mm-hmm. what, what, what would you share with them? When I was a child, I wanted to be a marine biologist. I loved dolphins and fish and the sea and the ocean and water and all of that and the beach. And I have an affinity for Indiana. Sure. (laughs) And not very good at science and math. So (laughs) we all have our gifts. Math and science is not where mine is. (laughs) Well, how did you come across that? that want if Mm -hmm. you're in Indiana. So my my mom worked for the Indianapolis Zoo. Ah, that makes sense. Okay. And I got to go behind the scenes and and play with the dolphins and the whales and the, in the aquarium. I just kind of had a backstage view for a lot of my life um, on marine life. And I was fascinated by it. Fascinated by a mammal that swims in the water and has babies the same way as humans. And, you know, and I was heartbroken that the oceans were, you know, a, a trash can. 
right. essentially, you know, and that we were killing ocean wildlife. And um, so I had a heart for that and I wasn't willing to move to a coast to make it happen. So. Sure. <laughs> and so, so what advice would you give t- to a young person yeah. then that is on their journey to find what they want to do? Yeah. Be curious. Mm, that's really good advice. Yeah. You re- research it all, do it all. For me, I used to think, because I've had lots of different jobs, as we've talked about here in my career, everything Mm -hmm. from waiting tables, doing sales, all the way to customer service. I even sold security guards, y'all, like people. (laughs) (laughs) And I learned something from myself in every single one of those places. I used to be ashamed that I have worked in all of those places. And what it actually did was give me context for where I am today. Sure. Sure. So when I tell, I have five kids, so what I tell them, try it all on for size. Mm -hmm. You want to go to college and try that out and see if that's your thing? Do it. You want to go be in beauty school and do hair and makeup? Go do that. You want to go to the Army and uh, be in the Army Reserves? Go do that. And whatever you take from that experience will go with you wherever you go. That's right. That's exactly right. It makes you well-rounded. It makes you connect with people on a different level as well, too. Yeah. And And you're right. That has prepared you for what you're doing now, Mm -hmm. and and it's amazing. And so as you wrap up right now, Amber, um, what would you tell our listeners if they are struggling with something right now, um, if they're going through a season of obstacles, what what advice would you give them to encourage them Mm -hmm. through this trial in their life right now? You actually just said it. Courage. Ah. You have got to be courageous. And when you can't be courageous, look, we're living in a really hard world right now, but I know that there is a reason and a season for this opportunity to elevate who we are as humanity, to elevate our faith. You've got to get grounded in whatever your faith is. I I don't care what it is. You've got to find what works for you and to ground in something because you are a part of something greater and bigger than what you see happening right in front of you. And we have got to be courageous in being able to move in that direction to attain and to reach and do the things. And oftentimes, even if you can't muster up the courage to do it yourself, go find an advocate, go find a sponsor, go find a friend, go find your husband or wife, whoever it is, to stand in the gap with you and hold you up when you can't do it yourself. Get somebody else's courage, because that's often who I am for people. Let me stand in your courage until I can find mine. It's beautiful. Yeah. That is very well said, Amber. Thank you so much. Yeah, Yeah, I appreciate you for sharing your wisdom, your time, your energy, and a small piece of yourself that hopefully makes others whole today. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Hello, hello. Arena, thank you so much for being here today. I'm so excited to have you. How are you this morning? I'm good. You're good? So tell me about your weekend. So what are you doing this weekend and like how are you spending your time except with me? Well, I think I might go um, somewhere and then um, I have been helping out at the house a little and then I just might sleep. You just might sleep. Sleeping is always good, isn't it? All right. Well, good. Well, I'm so excited to have you on the podcast today. Um, This is something new that we're doing is incorporating youth voice and you're part of our program at ProAct called Kids in Action, correct? Yes. And how are you liking it? Um, I'm actually loving it. You're loving it? Oh, loving it, not liking it? Why you love it? Because it's fun while you are helping the community and you get to work with other awesome people. Okay, good. Well, good. Well, I'm excited to learn more about that too. But today is not so much about ProAct, it's about you. All right, because we want to know who you are. Who is Arena? But before we get into who Arena is, the way we start these podcasts and these conversations off is that you get to ask me three questions. And so you've identified three questions that you want to ask me. Yes. And so I'll sit back and get interviewed by you. So let's go. The first one is that if you could only eat three foods the rest of your life, what would they be? If I could only eat three foods the rest of my life, what would they be? Definitely pizza. Okay. Okay. I love pizza. I will eat pizza any day, any time. Um, but the weird thing about me that a lot of people do is that I do not like cold pizza. And so I always have to eat it up or heat it up rather. And once I heat it up, I'm, I'm good to go. And my favorite place is Donato's. 
Second is Pizza Hut. And then I'm starting to like Domino's. But Domino's and Giordano's are kind of on the same path, even though they're completely different types of pizza. Um, so pizza, Oreos, but they have to be cinnamon bun Oreos, which you can't find anywhere in the U.S. right now. So I special order them from Canada and on Amazon, and it costs like 40 bucks for like three packets to get here. And so pizza, cinnamon bun Oreos, and the third thing might be, hmm, I would want to eat ramen noodles. <laughs> I know that sounds weird, but there's... Of ramen noodles are always a quick thing to just hop in the microwave and and eat at any time. And so what's your favorite food, Arena? This is kind of weird, but I like Caesar salad. Caesar salad? You know, I never had Caesar dressing before. Well, it's really good. It's kind of like ranch, but it's a lot different. Well, duh. It's a different <laughs> type of dressing. <laughs> no, I'm just messing. All right, so, so what's your next question for me? If you could have... Dinner with anyone past or present, who would it be and why? Dinner with anyone past or present? That is a great question. I would say presently, Will Smith. That's a good one. Will Smith is my favorite actor, and I will watch him in anything or listen to him do anything, and I would love to sit down with him and glean some wisdom from him. Yeah, how about you? For me... It would be present, and I would do it with Zendaya. Zendaya. Okay. Why Zendaya? Well, she's my one of my favorite actors, and I just think that she's also very pretty and smart. Yeah. I love her in Spider-Man. Yeah. She is a good MJ. <laughs> did, you, did you see the, uh, the, the most recent um, Spider-Man yet? Yeah, I believe so. Okay. Yeah, No Way Home is what it's called, all right? I love it. Yeah. I I'll watch anything Marvel, all right? All right, so what's your third question for me? My third one is that which distant family member do you wish could come visit us today? Distant family member. I've never met my grandparents. Um, I've had one grandparent that I knew my entire life, but she died in 2019. And so she died at 99 years old. Mm, that's, that's a long life. That's a long life, but I didn't really know her when she was like more, when she was younger and sharper. And so I would love to have uh, spent some time with each of my grandparents, actually, if I could. All right. Yeah. All right. Good. And so thank you for asking me those questions, Arena. Now it's my turn. Okay. You ready? I have about five questions I want to ask you to get to know you more and for our listeners to get to know you as well. Okay. And so my first question for you, Arena, for us to understand who you are and what your story is. So can you tell me someone in your life that you would like to thank and why? Mm, I would like to thank my grandpa who was in the hospital because he used to be a doctor. And even though he was a doctor, he used to play with me and my cousin almost every single day. Um, he used to help us a lot. And one thing is that if we were ever sick, um, he would always like take care of us. He would tell us to take this medicine. He would, he would tell us to do this or he would tell us to take rest. And that's what I liked about him. That's awesome. And what kind of doctor was he or is he? <laughs> I He was like. I forgot, but he used to do like a lot of things. Um, he used to do a lot of surgeries, and okay. sometimes he just used to help other doctors. Oh, nice. Okay. And so if you wanted to thank him, you would just want to thank him for just being there for you, it sounds yes. like. That's good. And then is he your dad's father or your mom's father? Um, My dad's father. Your dad's father? I've met your dad before. He seems really awesome. He is. Yeah, and so is your grandpa just like him, or is your, is your dad like his dad at all? I'd say that my dad is like my grandpa. Okay, that's good. And so you want to thank your, so you think your dad is um, always there for you as well, it sounds like, because he was there at our service project that I, that I attended with you, right? Yeah. That's good. And so my next question for you then, Arena, then is so what, what do you think happiness is? For me, I think happiness is when you have no worries, um, you are just living your best self and you're just enjoy. 
And so are you a happy person? You consider yourself happy? Yeah. Yeah? Well, then talk to me. So how old are you then, Arena? I'm 11. I'm turning 12 in December 10th. December 10th. My birthday is December 12th. We're Team Sagittarius. Yes. You know that? Yeah. <laughs> Team Sagittarius unites. So pound it right there. Thank you. So a lot of kids that come from like low income areas or vulnerable backgrounds, they aren't typically happy. So what might you say to them for them to look at their lives and look at the good things that are happening in their life? I'd say... You are doing awesome. Continue doing what you're doing and do not ever let anyone put you down. That's good. So how do you like overcome like when people might talk down about people or talk about them or make fun of them? Sometimes I might defend other times. I just might talk to them and I'll just be friends with them. You Have you ever experienced bullying or type of talk that might make you feel not good about yourself? Um, yeah, I have experienced that a lot. So what was that like? It made me feel very like negative and gloomy, but I was also happy because I had some friends in third grade. That's good. And you're sixth grade now? Fifth. Fifth grade? And so all that happened in third grade, you said? Yeah. And so when I was in third grade, I, yeah, I got called pig nose a lot. Oh. Right. And my family said that I have to grow into my nose <laughs> yeah, because my nose is so big as a kid. But, um, you know, my story a little bit that I have a stuttering problem. Yeah. And when I was in third grade, fourth, fifth, sixth grade, I physically couldn't talk sometimes. And, uh, if it wasn't for like those caring adults in my life, I wouldn't be here talking and using my voice to help other people use their voice and use their skills and talents to empower and inspire other people. All right. And so you're kind of like that, too. Right. Because you're a very good student, I hear. And so how do you inspire other people to come outside of their shells? Sometimes what I tell is that be yourself or um, don't listen to other people. Don't listen to them like yeah. the negative side of them. Right? Yeah. Yeah. That's what I, mean. I got you. OK. Well, Arena, what what stirs your emotions? Ne Negatively or positively? Just what stirs your emotions? Like what what gets you excited? What gets you down? Like talk to us about that. Well, my friends and my family, because I'm always excited to see them. And we just be ourselves and we like make each other happy. And then other times it's like when something like unexpected just happens. Mm -hmm. Like what kind of things unexpectedly? Like somebody you knew or loved moved away or they passed away all suddenly and that and yeah has that happened to you at all yeah it has happened who in your life has passed away or moved away well it happened a long time ago but i had just met my grandpa's brother i think um he looked a lot like my grandpa and he was like just like him he was fun he was nice he said that when he left that I should come visit his house next time we're near him or we can tell him that we're going to come and visit. But maybe like a month later, he died. Oh, wow. Yeah. And so how old were you then? I think I was somewhere between nine, no, maybe eight to ten. Eight to ten. OK. And where's your family from originally, Irina? Well, my mom is from Bangladesh. My dad is from new york or michigan um i'm from ohio toledo mm -hmm. and um we're all just like we go to different places a lot so we okay. enjoy seeing a bunch of family members sure and so tell me about your parents so your dad's awesome i haven't met your mom yet so so talk to us about them like how what do they mean to you in your life um they mean a lot of things to me um they, they help me a lot, of course. Um, if I have a problem, they'll always talk to me and they'll try to give me answers and they'll tell me their story about how it happened, too. Sure. What's the best story about your parents that you can tell us? Well, my when my, when I, when my dad was, like, little, he, he accidentally drank perfume once and 
she did it twice. And so the poison control people, they got so annoyed. They just said, you know what to do. And then my dad was just like, okay. He was okay. But yeah. So he drank perfume twice. <laughs> How does that happen? I don't know. He thought it would help his breath. <laughs> oh, I got you. <laughs> That's hilarious. Okay. Well, then outside of school, then what's one thing that you learned about your life or about life in general, not from a teacher? I think I would say, like, try to be your, try to be yourself more, be more active, try to make people feel like they're welcomed, too. Yeah. Who taught you that? Mm, one time it was one of my dad's friends, I think. Mm-hmm. And then... And the other time, it was my mom's co-worker. Okay. Yeah, that's good. And so ProAct is all about, so do you uh, do you have our mission memorized? Um, I think I have part of it memorized, but we're still, I'm still getting the hang of it. Well, try. Take a stab at it. Um, our mission is to what? To, I feel, to stand in the cap gap while empowering youth and trans you're good trans um to stand in the gap for vulnerable populations and while empowering youth to actively transform their communities yeah all right and so my last question for you today then is how would you encourage other youth to stand in the gap for others um help each other um and be yourself again. Be happy. Um, don't listen to what other people say about you and others. Um, just be, just act beyond them. Be a better person. That's right. Good. Well, Arena, it's been so great talking to you and getting to know you a bit more. And I'm so glad for our listeners to have the opportunity to see a little bit into your life. So thank you so much for sharing and being so open and vulnerable with this. Thank you. Welcome. Now, let me ask you, who stood in the gap for you? What are the words that changed your life? If you can answer that question, then I want you on the show. Send me a message at darren at proactindy.org. That's Darren, D-E-R-R-I-N, at proactindy.org.